You're listening to the Kirk and Tillich Herald, a Q and Review recording service podcast, brought to you by our team of volunteers currently recording from their homes across Scotland. Whether you're listening via the BWBF online players, the telephone app, or our brand new Alexa skill, please phone us on 0141 772 3976 to feedback on what you want us to provide and improve upon. Please also join your family and friends in being our audio ambassadors and share our Facebook, Twitter and Instagram all at Q and Review. That's at symbol C-U-E-A-N-D-R-E-V-I-E-W. This week's podcast, date Wednesday the 23rd of November 2022, is read to you by Alan, Corey, Hunter and Ian. Young Carer's Appeal Local lad, Zane Lomier, is 15 years old and a young carer for his mum Audrey, who has rheumatoid arthritis and chronic fatigue syndrome. Zane has trained in karate two to three times a week since he was nine years old, encouraged by his teachers at Douglas Academy. Zane said, I loved it the very first time I tried it. I like all the sen- sensei, karate instructors, who instruct. They are kind but strict and have always encouraged me to do my best. It's just my mum and I, but even when she isn't feeling well, she makes sure I don't miss my training. Last year he realised his dream when he was picked to be a part of the Scottish KUGB karate team, representing Scotland at a number of various competitions held throughout the UK. Zane was able to cover the entry fee to competitions by saving his Christmas and birthday money and access funding via donations, legacies and a short break's time to live grant, all through the assistance provided by Carers Link, which helped to cover the cost of petrol, hotel accommodation and food during the trips. Zane said, Not only was the karate great, it was really lovely for my mum and I to go away for a weekend. It felt like we were having a holiday together. That's something we very rarely ever get a chance to do. I feel lucky that I have managed to find a sport that I love and make good friends through. Although Carers Link can still contribute some funding, they worry that this is not enough to meet all Zane's needs, nor is it sustainable. Carers Link and Zane's mum, Audrey, are now seeking wider support for for the ambitious and talented youngster. Audrey says, We truly appreciate all the support given to us last year by Carers Link. They have always supported Zane as a young carer and went above and beyond last year with the additional funding they provided. Since my health changed years ago, I found it at times extremely frustrating that I can no longer work and provide in the way that I once could, which means Zane is losing out on so much. Through these competitions, I have seen seen growing confidence in both physical and mental strength. He's able to meet and enjoy quality time with his peers, as well as take the time out to enjoy normal childhood interactions, which, at times, he misses out on so much. In May 2020, Zane competed in the Scottish Championships and picked up a gold medal in the under-16 team kata, a bronze medal in the under-16 individual kata, and another bronze medal in the under-16 kumite competitions. Audrey continued, He was so delighted and happy and, for me, it was just great to see him realise that his hard work and efforts he gives to his sport is paying off. I definitely believe he competed with more confidence and won these medals because of the experience he has gained from competing in those previous trips to England. Audrey and Carers Link would now like to reach out to any organisation, trust, local business or individual that feels that would be able to sponsor or provide support to this budding star and allow Zane to continue his childhood dream. Zane was recently selected to compete in the World Championships in September and next month in the European Championships in Switzerland, where he is part of a smaller select Scottish squad. Cost associated with us are estimated to be around £2,000. If anyone is interested in helping Zane, please contact Veronica at Carers Link on 07827 062645 or veronica at carerslink.org.uk This Week in History, read by me, Ian. November the 23rd, 1910, Dr Holly Harvey Crippen, who poisoned his wife to seek a new life with his lover, Ethel Leneve, was hanged at Pentonville Prison. On this day last year, Hexham was Crown Britain's happiest place to live in, in an annual poll. 
November the 24th, 1991, Freddie Mercury, lead singer of the rock group Queen, died aged 45. November the 25th, 1984, Britain's top rock stars, responding to a call by Bob Geldof, gathered together under the name Band-Aid to record Do They Know It's Christmas in need of the Ethiopian famine appeal. On this day last year, a world first trial assessing a cannabis based drug to treat an aggressive form of brain cancer was given the go ahead, a charity announced. November 26, 1983, gold bars worth £25 million were stolen from the Brinks Match Security Warehouse at Heathrow Airport. November 27, 1942, as German troops arrived in Toulon, the French fleet was scuttled in the harbour to prevent warships falling into enemy hands. On this day last year, Storm Arwen hit the UK with gusts of almost 100 miles per hour battering some areas. November 28, 1934, Winston Churchill warned that weak defences could mean that Britain could be tortured into absolute subjection in any war with Germany. Have a say on spend. Ahead of the challenging task of setting its budget for 2023 2024, Eastern Bartonshire is offering the public the chance to share their views. The Council expects it will need to address a funding gap of around £20 million, so Council Leader Gordon Lowe has launched a month-long consultation exercise to allow people to give their opinions on commitments which have already been made and the decisions which are coming up. Councillor Lowe said, Following the election earlier this year, we identified our biggest challenges as the ongoing cost of living crisis impacting all our households and the global climate emergency. We also gave a commitment to engage with and seek the views of our communities to inform our decision making. I am in no doubt how difficult setting the council budget for 2023-2024 will be. Not only are our residents and service users facing huge financial challenges themselves, but that very cost of living crisis makes delivering council services even more expensive at a time when funding for all parts of the public sector is already under enormous pressure. While the council will set the budget in February, we want to hear the views from our communities in three key areas. Potential increases in council tax and fees, the range of cost of living supports we have already put in place, and by what possible means more services could be delivered directly in the heart of our communities. The budget consultation, titled Have Your Say, is now live and will run until Sunday, December the 11th. The findings will inform the Council's budget decisions. It can be found online at www.eastonbarton.gov.uk forward slash budget dash consultation. That's www.eastonbarton.gov.uk forward slash budget dash consultation. Anyone unable to complete the survey online, if anyone is unable to complete the survey online, can request a printed copy by calling the Council's customer services team on 0300 That's 0300 4510. During the consultation period, Council team members will be visiting community centres, hubs, halls and leisure centres throughout the area to help people to take part. Anyone completing the survey can enter a prize draw for one of five £80 farm foods vouchers. The winners will be drawn on December 12th. Read by Alan Todd. Tougher rules as recorded by Hunter MacDonald. New Scottish Government guidance that toughens the rules on drive through applications has been welcomed by local Green MSP Ross Greer. The measures were outlined in the draft National Planning Framework 4, which was published after extensive input from the Scottish Greens. The MSP has urged Eastern Bartonshire Council, which will soon consider at least two new drive through applications to embrace this new guidance. The increase in drive throughs is a growing problem across the UK, with a 41% increase between 2015 and 2020. There are currently two proposals on the A81 Mulgay Road alone, 
in addition to the one currently operated by McDonald's. Transport emissions are Scotland's single largest source of greenhouse gases. Labour MSP calls for NHS action. Scottish Labour MSP Katie Clark has called the NHS crisis in Greater Glasgow and Clyde the worst in the board's history and demanded an emergency winter plan from the Scottish Government. She warned that staff shortages, workload and delays in referral and treatment could lead to the health service collapsing without urgent intervention. This week, Royal College of Nursing members took the historic decision to strike for the first time in history, with 96.5% of Greater Glasgow members voting in favour, the second highest figure in the country. It comes after the latest figures showed just 72% of a &E patients in the area were seen within four hours, one of the worst performances on record. Katie, who represents West Scotland, commented, This is the worst crisis our NHS has ever seen, certainly the worst in NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Board's history. In just one year, the Health Board reported 216 investigations into significant adverse events. a &E departments are overrun. The public are being asked not to attend for minor injuries, and ambulances are stuck queuing to drop off patients. Meanwhile, nurses are at the end of their tether. They want fair pay and better conditions, as well as increased staffing levels, so they can actually keep their patients safe. A lack of resources is putting the public at risk, and further delays to referrals and treatments could lead to the NHS completely collapsing entirely, both in Greater Glasgow and Clyde, and across Scotland. Fireworks Safety Appeal by NHS Senior consultants at NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde are appealing to members of the public to understand the risks involved when using fireworks. The Royal Hospital for Children has treated a number of firework-related injuries over the last few days, which resulted in several children being admitted to the hospital and requiring specialist treatment, including surgery. Dr Vincent Chowdhury, consultant in paediatric emergency medicine at NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde, said, Fireworks safety is vitally important as several children have attended the emergency department at the Royal Hospital for Children with fireworks injuries in over the last few days. We continue to work with partners at the Scottish Government, emergency services and members of the public to minimise further attendance for this type of incident. As the festive period approaches, it is important to understand the risks involved with fireworks and how to use them sensibly. Although accidents happen, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde are appealing to parents to ensure displays can be enjoyed in a safe environment for all the family. Thus comes up a time where the RHC, like many other hospitals, are seeing record attendance, record levels of emergency attendance across a range of medical and surgical specialities at the front door. I would like to thank all the members of staff at the Royal Hospital for Children who provided care and support following a very challenging few days. Drop-in clinics. Vaccination drop-ins will be available at a number of community clinics across NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde from this weekend. Over the next three weeks, there will be opportunities for eligible members of the public to drop in to receive their vaccination at certain clinics in each local authority area. The service will initially be available to those over the age of 65, frontline health and social care staff, or for people who have not yet had a first or second COVID vaccination. Anne Hartness, NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde said, We are pleased to be offering drop-in services for those who are eligible or who have not yet had their initial vaccinations. Previous drop-in services have been a great success. Further details of available clinics via the website. MSP honours John Watson. A Bishopriggs entrepreneur whose childhood dream was to own his own lorry has received a Lifetime Achievement Award for an incredible 55 years of success in the haulage industry. South Kelvin and Bearsden MSP Rona Mackay congratulated John Watson of Bishopriggs based Clamshell Hire on receiving the prestigious award from Transport News magazine. Miss Mackay also put forward a motion at the Scottish Parliament honouring John and his family for their entrepreneurship and tenacity, spanning more than half a century. Miss Mackay said, No one deserves this award more 
I was delighted to honour his achievement at the Scottish Parliament. West Park United FC A motion proposing closer partnership between Eastern Bartonshire Council and football club West Park United was discussed at a recent meeting. Councillor Ben Rose, Liberal Democrat, Bishop Briggs South, proposed the motion which welcomed the growth of the club and the valuable community service it provides. It noted that West Park currently has 147 volunteer coaches who provide 8,500 hours of coaching to 550 players in the past year. The motion further noted that 2,500 hours of coaching was provided to Eastern Bartonshire children and that the fastest growing membership elements of the group were women and girls who currently comprise a quarter of total membership. Councillor Rose said that West Park United was challenged by oversubscription to its facilities which prevented access to football for some. Developments at the club had seen increased resources but collaboration with the council was necessary. Councillor Alan Moyer, Labour, Bishop Briggs South, tabled an amendment which broadened the focus of discussion to all community sporting clubs, noting that Auchinairn and Bishop Briggs have six clubs with some 1,750 members and more than 550 volunteers. He also highlighted the success of the Hunters Hill Sports Facility, which had opened in 2017 and was used for many different sports, calling for further expansion of sports facilities in the area to consider building up on this. Councillor Rose accepted this amendment as an addition to his motion and Councillor Moyer praised the work done at West Park United over the last 40 years, while reminding his fellow councillors to acknowledge the wider sports fraternity, highlighting the importance of Hunters Hill. Councillor Leader Gordon Lowe said he expected to see officers working in partnership with sports clubs and if it had not happened in the past, he would want to see this improve in future. Success for Parent Project Hundreds of young mothers and their children have celebrated the 10th anniversary of the NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Family Nurse Partnership. The programme run in conjunction with Glasgow City Health and Social Care Partnership is a home visiting programme offered to women in early pregnancy aged 19 and younger. Mothers-to-be are placed at the centre of the scheme which aims to improve pregnancy outcomes, child health, development and future educational readiness. Since it began, more than a thousand clients have graduated from the two-year programme which is voluntary. NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde Director of Nursing Professor Angela Wallace said, Supporting young mothers and their children through the FNP has been a hugely successful programme. Our teams of family nurses have been key in ensuring young women, many from disadvantaged or care experience backgrounds, are given a voice which is listened to. NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde take top spots and awards. A number of NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde staff have been celebrated and awarded for their services to the annual Scottish Health Awards. NHS GDC staff won three awards and were nominated for quite a remarkable nine in total. Physiotherapist and Allied Health Professional AHP, Marie Burke won the award for Allied Health Professional of the Year, while Brenda Kirk, a clinical nurse specialist, took home the Nurse of the Year award. The Navigator Scotland Initiative, which helps provide intervention to patients to, pre to prevent violence, won the Tackling Inequality Award. The awards which honour the brightest and best individuals and teams working within the health, the health sector in Scotland, come as NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde and other boards in Scotland respond to the massive and ongoing challenge of dealing with coronavirus, COVID-19, pandemic and the knock-on effects of the disease. Those working across health and social care have shown an incredible level of resolve and flexibility during this time, in many cases being deployed into completely new roles and into new ways of working across the NHS and social care system. Commenting Jane, Gr commenting Jane Grant, Chief Executive for NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde said, A huge congratulations to all the winners at this year's Scottish Health Awards. It's an absolutely fantastic achievement to be nominated with such top, tough competition from right across the country. I am very proud of all of our staff who were shortlisted as well as those who won awards. Each of them has shown their personal commitment to patient-centred care, a real compassion for their 
patients and service users, as well as an exceptionally hard work ethic, and this is a testament to the quality, skill, experience and commitment that all our NHS staff provide to our patients and the health sector every day. A full list of the categories, finalists and winners can be found at www.scottishhealthawards.com. Green Eco Event The Eco Committee at Lairdsland Primary School are currently looking at ways to reduce waste in the school and the community. So, they have planned a Green Friday event for this Friday, 25th of November. Green Friday is to swap shop for dropping off clothes you don't need and for you to take things that you do need, all for free. They are looking for donation of the following items that fit primary school age children. School uniform, club uniform, girl guiding, boys brigade, scouts, dancing, gymnastics, judo, etc. Casual clothes, winter warmers, jackets, jumpers, hats, gloves, etc. Christmas clothing, jumpers, PJs, smart clothes, etc. And shoes. They need some helpers to, to help in the day. Please let the school know if you can help by email office at lairsland.e dunbarton.sach.uk. Inhalers to be recycled. NHS Greater Glasgow and Clyde is helping patients and the planet breathe better by using improved guidelines on respiratory inhalers. The biggest health board in Scotland is supporting the Scottish Government's NHS Scotland Climate Emergency and Sustainability Strategy, which aims to improve respiratory care via a patient-centred approach whilst reducing the environmental impact of inhalers. Metered dosed inhalers, MDIs, are one of or one type of inhaler used to treat airways diseases and account for 4% of the total NHS carbon footprint as they contain propellants that are potent greenhouse gases. Updated guidelines now categorise each type of inhaler device according to its carbon footprint, making it easier for clinicians and patients to make informed choices about the environmental impact of the inhaler. Where clinically appropriate, safe and agreeable to the patient, lower carbon alternatives to MDIs such as dry powder inhalers, DPIs, and soft mist inhalers, SMIs, which do not contain propellants, are the preferred option for treatment. The carbon footprint of a Ventolin MDI is typically 28 kilograms per CO2, while a comparative DPI has a footprint of less than one kilogram per CO2. Most patients with asthma and COPD can use lower carbon inhalers effectively and often find them easier to use but NHS GGC are recommending that any changes are made via patient-facing reviews with a healthcare professional. It is very important that patients continue to take their prescribed inhalers and do not stop them unless advised by a healthcare professional. Patients are being encouraged to return inhalers to community pharmacies for environmentally safer disposal or recycling and not to dispose of inhalers in the household waste or recycling bins. Even when there are no doses left in MDIs, they still contain significant amounts of propellant, typically hydrofluorochlorine H HFA, which can be released into the atmosphere and contribute to global warming. Returned inhalers will be recycled or incinerated, which degrades the propellant into far less potent greenhouse gases. Funding is now available. As part of its cost of living support package, Eastern Bartonshire Council has allocated a £30,000 grant fund to support local organisations to deliver warm spaces this winter. As part of a suite of measures to help local people through the cost of living crisis, local organisations can apply for up to £1,000 to support their plans to offer warm spaces to those in need in their communities. In launching the application process, Council Leader Gordon Lowe said, The cost of living crisis is one of our biggest challenges and we have allocated £2.1 million to fund a range of initiatives to support those most in need in our communities. This Warm Space Grant Fund was agreed at a recent Council meeting and we have already begun the process of engaging with partners and local organisations to develop warm spaces right across the area. An online application process is now open for organisations to apply via a dedicated page on the Council website. 
be a food bank friend and help to feed the hungry. In cities, towns and villages across the UK, from Aberdeen to Brighton, Blackpool to Beverly, and everywhere in between, people have been pushed to crisis point by the increasing cost of living. The toughest of choices are having to be made. Parents not eating so they can have enough food for their children, pensioners not turning the heating on because they can't afford to stay warm, and people with disabilities stuck in their homes because they can't afford accessible transport. The Trussell Trust is a charity with a network of more than 1,300 food bank centres across the UK. You may not have noticed them in your community, but with 40,000 volunteers working tirelessly around the clock to make sure people facing hunger, hunger can access the food and support they need, they are the safety net that is catching people struggling to get by. This winter is going to be the toughest yet for food banks, though they are faced with a tsunami of need and soaring op- operational costs and they cannot respond to this crisis alone. They urgently need your support. The charity's long-term goal is a future without emergency food, where everyone has the income and support they need to get by. But, right now, they are focused on ensuring that everyone has access to food. The Trussell Trust Chief Executive Emma Ravey said, People are struggling to afford the essentials, and we are expecting that this winter will be the hardest yet for food banks and the people they support. Almost 1.3 million emergency food parcels were provided to people between April and September this year by food banks and the Charities UK network and almost half a million of those went to children. In the same six months, 320,000 people were forced to turn to a food bank in the Trussell Trust network for the first time. That's a 40% increase compared to the same period last year and the equivalent of everyone in Nottingham having to access a food bank. Every penny raised by the Trussell Trust Emergency Appeal will go towards helping food banks keep going this winter by funding grants to respond to the cost of living crisis, by helping to cover the increased running costs for food, facilities and frontline staff, as well as seasonal specific support for people facing hardships such as hot water bottles, blankets and food banks that don't need cooking. Direct advice and finances to help tens of thousands of people maximise their incomes, their income is available Via the charities Help Through the Hardship Helpline, we're in partnership with Citizens and Advice, and through one to one support sessions at Food Bank to support people through this crisis and beyond. Additional support is required to food banks to help navigate the current crisis, including access to regional and national expertise to ensure they continue to serve our communities through ever changing external envi- environments. Revy continued The public has continued to be generous with its donations but the need for food is far outstripping what we need now. Food banks are having to buy twice as much food as they did last year, and that, combined with rising operational costs, is making it hard for them to keep going. We know that our gen- the generosity of our audience knows no bounds, and that we as a community of readers and journalists can make a true difference this winter. With one in five people visiting a food bank coming from a working household, hunger is an issue that can touch all of us. There is no doubt we are all feeling the pinch, but we are hoping that during the coming weeks you can spare whatever you can to the Trussell Trust, www.trusseltrust.org slash national world slash winter appeal. Across our family of newspapers, we aim to raise as much money as we can to support this vital charity this winter. The money raised will go directly to food banks to ensure that anyone who needs a helping hand this winter gets it. Your money will be the difference between a family in your community eating or a family in your community going hungry. That is how important this appeal is. Letter from the editor. Dear reader, listener, for many families and those on their own, this winter will be particularly tough. Soaring inflation, rising interest rates and an economy in recession means that making ends meet has never been more difficult for many people. That is why we, and our sister titles across the UK, are pleased to be supporting the Trussell Trust and a network of more than 1,300 food banks. 40,000 volunteers are working tirelessly around the clock to make sure people facing hunger can access the food and support they need. And by supporting our appeal, you can make a huge difference. We're asking those of you who can afford to make a small, or even not so small, donation to do so using www.trusseltrust.org slash national world slash link 
every penny you give will be distributed to the network of food banks. Almost 1.3 million emergency food parcels were provided to people between April and September this year by food banks in the charity's UK network, and almost half a million of these went to children. At the time when more people than ever need help and, su- need help and few are able to give food parcels, your support at, of this great cause has never been more important. Thank you. Specsavers offer home visits for the housebound. In the lead up to and beyond World Diabetes Day, advice is being offered by Specsavers Home Visit Service, which sees optician, opticians travelling across the country to provide full and thorough eye tests for those who are unable to visit their opticians unaccompanied due to illness or disability. With half of diabetes sufferers being aged 65 or over, the home visit team can play a significant role in the early diagnosis of diabetes in older people. Lynn Phillips, one of the directors of the Specsavers Home Visit Service covering East Dumbartonshire says, there's a misconception that regular eye tests are only for people who have noticed a change in their eyesight but that's just a small part of why they are so important. They are able to detect a whole host of health problems with the early signs of diabetes being a prime example. With half of diabetes sufferers being over 65, it's particularly important that older people have regular eye tests to ensure that the warning signs of diabetes are spotted as early as possible. That's why Specsavers is proud to offer home visits to anybody unable to leave their home on their own including residents of care homes. We're proud to provide such a service and want to ensure everybody is given the due care they deserve when it comes to their eyes, regardless of age. Diabetes in your eyes. Here, Lynn explains more about diabetes and your eyes. A complication of diabetes is diabetic retinopathy, which can occur when high blood sugar levels over a long period of time damage the blood vessels in the back of the eye. If left untreated, it can cause sight loss. In its early stages, diabetic retinopathy doesn't cause, usually doesn't cause any noticeable symptoms, so an eye test can pick it up before you do. As the condition affects small blood vessels, your optometrist can look for early changes, such as tiny leaks from the damaged vessels. As retinopathy develops, blood vessels can weaken or leak. If it worsens, some vessels can close off, which causes new ones to grow in the retina. This can lead to problems with your vision and even sight loss. To request a home visit, see www.specsavers.co.uk forward slash home dash I dash tests. That's www.specsavers.co.uk forward slash home dash I dash tests. Academy Entry with less than a month to go until the entry deadline for Film G, a talented roster from across the Scottish media sector have been running workshops across the country to support aspiring filmmakers to create their own Gaelic short films. Since this year's competition kicked off in September, workshops have taken place in Inverness, Lewis, Gearloch, Ullapool, Oban, Digwall, Dunnan, Aberdeen and Skye, with dozen more planned to be coming in the coming month. In Bishop Briggs, BBC Alba filmmakers Doll Eoin McKinnon and Fian McLeod tutored two separate groups at Bishop Briggs Academy. During the two-day workshops, tutors have been working on the intricacies of good storytelling and technical work, as well as the importance of effective editing to bring the young creative stories to life. Award winner is applauded by MSP. A popular Kirkendall Garden Centre has been congratulated by local MSP Ron Mackay after winning a global award for the quality of food at its restaurant. Drathkelman and Bearsden MSP Ron Mackay presented Calder's Garden Centre at Kilsyth Road with a special certificate from the Scottish Parliament after the family firm took a Global Restaurant Guru Recommendation Award 2022 for the delicious homemade meals on offer at its Butterchurn and Coffee Shop. Restaurant Guru it's a worldwide online guide to good food and bases its awards solely in customer reviews. Mr Mackay put forward a promotion at the Scottish Parliament to mark the family firm's success. Presenting the frame certificate to garden centre owner Colin Barry and his coffee shop team, Ms Mackay said, The award demonstrates how highly the Butterchurn coffee shop at Calder's is rated by visitors 
in the local constituency and further afield. Colin and his team must be congratulated on winning this award. Calder's is a well known for its professionalism and welcome. As well as serving delicious meals, the centre boasts a team of highly trained horticulturalists. I wish Calder's and their award winning butter churn coffee shop all the best for the future. I'm sure they will continue to go from strength to strength. The motion read that, that Parliament congratulates Calder's Garden Centre, Kirk and Tillich, on winning a Global Restaurant Guru Recommendation Award 2022. Understands that Restaurant Guru, a worldwide online guide to good food, bases its awards solely in customer reviews. Consider that this demonstrates how highly the local establishment's butter churn coffee shop, where visitors can relax and enjoy a freshly cooked meal, is rated by visitors in the local area and further afield. Praises the team at Calders at Gazile Road for their professionalism and welcome at the garden centre, nestled at the foot of the Campsie Hills with spectacular views. Acknowledges that, as well as serving delicious, delicious meals at the coffee shop, the centre boasts a team of highly trained horticulturalists, a stunning gift shop packed full of ideas, and then outside the area stocked with hand chosen plants, pots, compost, and much more. House prices. House prices increased by 1.2% in Eastern Bartonshire in September. New figures show. The rise contributes to the longer term trend, which has seen property prices in the area grow by 12.6% over the last year. The average Eastern Bartonshire house price in September was £273,299. Land registry figures show a 1.2% increase in August. Over the month, the picture was different to that across Scotland where prices decreased by 0.9% and Eastern Partnership was above the UK as a whole where prices did not change. Over the last year, the average sale price of property in Eastern Partnership rose by £30,000, putting the area 7th among Scotland's 32 local authorities with price data for annual growth. The highest growth within the Nye Island share. Family Announcements Deaths McCallum, Ian Cross. Peacefully at home on November 13th, 2022, with his family by his side. Beloved husband of the late Joyce, much loved dad of Mora and Shona, and loving father in law of Gillies and Jerry. Funeral service will take place on Monday, November 28th, 2022, at Daldowie Crematorium. For 11 a.m. Ross, Alexander Gordon, brackets, Sandy, died at Melford Court Nursing Home on November 8th, 2022, aged 91. Beloved husband of Isabel and loving and beloved stepfather, step grandfather, and step great grandfather. Sorely missed by everyone. Funeral service will take place at All Saints Church, Acton, at 2pm on Monday, December 5th, followed by interment at All Saints Cemetery. No flowers, please. Shoppers urged to stay local for Black Friday. Shoppers across Dumbartonshire are being urged to choose local this Black Friday and get behind businesses in their community. The team behind the Scotland Loves Local campaign is calling on everyone across the region to think local first during the entire countdown to Christmas too. They are encouraging people to spend using Scotland Loves Local gift cards available in East and West Bartonshire, ensuring the money they spend stays local for longer by directly supporting shops, attractions and jobs in the area. Black Friday has become a key date in the festive shopping calendar with major multinational retailers offering huge discounts on items. Increasingly, however, local businesses have also adopted offers, making it a key part in the so-called golden quarter in the lead up to Christmas. Scotland Loves Local is a campaign that urges people to think, choose and spend locally to help their communities recover from the impacts of COVID-19 and to build a stronger, more sustainable future. It is spearheaded by Scotland's Towns Partnership, STP, with support from Scottish Government. STP Chief Officer Phil Prentice said, Black Friday shouldn't just be a payday for the online giants. Local businesses need to benefit too. 
Whether in person or online, we would encourage everyone to think local first when shopping. It's an investment in your community's future. A successful Christmas can mean the difference between surviving or not for many businesses. That is truer than ever this year, as, like everyone else, they work to make the, manage the impact of rising costs with the after effects of the pandemic. It's critical for the future of local high streets that we get behind the, the people around, around us by supporting local businesses whenever we can, whether physically or virtu virtually. A way in which local people can show that support is by using the Scotland Loves Local gift card, available regionally in East and West in the Bartonshire. They can only be spent by local businesses registered to accept them. That makes them a direct way in which money can be used to support local jobs in shops, bars, restaurants and visitor attractions. Letters page, Let's Talk, Wednesday the 23rd of November 2022 Ukraine and Covid apart, Brexit is still a major factor in the UK's slowdown. Sir, while the UK government blames the Ukraine war and Covid for the record drop in living standards, the Office of Budget Responsibility, OBR, claims that Brexit is also a factor. This helps explain why the UK has the slowest growth among the G7 leading economies, precipitating a 7% fall in disposable income in real terms over the next two years. The fiscal watchdog estimates that Brexit has reduced trading intensity by 15%, while the other G7 countries saw a significant trade recovery from 2020. It also estimates an extra payment of nearly £20 billion in divorce payments to the EU is outstanding. Furthermore, the UK's loss of exports to the EU has not been recouped by exports to other countries, with these down 18% in 2019 levels. This contributed to long-term GDP expected to reduce by 4% as a result of Brexit, making our economy smaller and the country poorer. The most vulnerable are protected by inflation matching increases in the benefits and pensions. Even these groups will be worse off, however, as they spend much more of their time in income pro proportionately on food, which has seen price increases of 16% over the last year, far outstripping the 10% uplift. The Scottish Government needs to redistribute income through tax, with those earning over £100,000 paying the top rate of tax and increase this to 50%. It's obscene that anyone should be earning this level of income when millions are struggling to pay their basic bills. As the UK parties will not be able to join the EU to grow the, grow the economy, they must consider joining the European Free Trade Area or the country will continue to be poorer. This has many of the benefits of an economic union with the EU without being tied to its agriculture and fisheries policy. Yours etc. Neil Anderson by email. Gender bill cannot be allowed to ignore rights of women. Sir, the UK is a liberal country when it comes to sexual orientation. Equal marriage is generally accepted and cross-dressing is seen as a matter of personal choice. Such measures have entered our culture and should make life easier for trans people. However, the Gender Recognition Bill goes further than that and raises a lot of questions about ex-males accessing women's spaces. The world of women's sport, for example, is divided on the issue. Some sports have accepted ex-males on an equal basis with women, while others have ruled ex-males have a biological advantage acquired as they grew up and so these sports do not accept ex-males and women. Likewise, there are problems of prisoners in male prisons being able to demand transfer to women's prisons and ex-males accessing women's refugees. Nor is it clear why nor is it clear why people should be allowed to rewrite their birth certificate. A birth certificate states what a person's sex was at birth. It does not prevent anyone from living as the opposite sex later in life. However, giving people the right to alter their birth certificate will make the problems outlined above concerning access to women's sports, prisons and refugees much more difficult to resolve because it will seem to confer a, ha confer a right of access. For that reason, many people are worried that the Scottish Government should allow anyone to rewrite their birth certificate. These are just some of the issues which cause widespread concern about the Gender Recognition Reform Bill. Women's rights campaigners have highlighted these issues, among others, but it is not clear how, how the problems have been resolved so that the bill can proceed. Can someone please explain how the bill deals with these difficulties? No bill at all would be better than a bill which ignores women's rights. Yours etc. Les Reed, Address Supplied.
secretly in agreement? Sir, in her response to Jeremy Hunt's autumn statement, Shadow Chancellor Rachel Reeves gave the stern warning that his measures mean working people face cancelled holidays, sleepless nights and hopes of the future dashed. That sounds miles better than her and most politicians previous stern warnings that people are having to decide between feeding and heating their families. Does she secretly agree with his budget? Yours etc. Alan Sutherland by email. World Prematurity Day gets support. A council motion has helped draw attention to the number of premature births in East Nebartonshire and further afield. Councillor Ian Gallagher, SNP, Beardin South, tabled a motion which noted that in the year ending March 31st, 2021, 42 babies in East Nebartonshire had been born prematurely, which is defined as before 37 weeks of gestation. The motion called upon the council to note the importance of World Prematurity Day, November the 17th, which this year is themed around a parent's embrace and the importance of skin-to-skin contact between parent and baby as soon as possible after birth. The council was asked to commend the work of organisations such as Bliss Scotland in raising awareness of premature birth and providing support to families and welcome the neonatal care pay and leave bill led to the UK Parliament by Cumbernauld, Cosyth and Kirkintilly East MP Stuart MacDonald. This pro- proposes giving up to 12 weeks of additional statutory paid leave for parents when a baby requires a week or more of neonatal care. care. The Council was also encouraged to recognise the work of its own officers in developing policy in line with this bill and participate in World Prematurity Day, possibly with a social media campaign or by use of building illuminations. Labour Councillor Callum McNally, Lindsay and Kirkintilla South, voiced an amendment of noting the campaigning efforts of Mark Griffin, MSP, to ensure consistent financial support for the parents of premature babies, and noting that families can access the Neonatal Expenses Fund to help with the cost of frequent hospital visits. This amendment was accepted by Councillor Gallagher and incorporated into the motion. The Liberal Democrat, Democrat Group also had an amendment, with Councillor Susan Murray, Kirkintel of North and East and, East and Twicker, noting that the information from the charity Tommy's showed 10% of babies who survive premature birth develop a permanent disability, with many requiring lifelong care. Accordingly, they welcomed the carer's leave bill from Ms. Cham- Ms. Chamberlain, MP. MP hits out at autumn budget. Amy Callaghan, MP, has warned that families and residents in Eastern Bartonshire face a worsening cost of living crisis and simply cannot afford another round of Tory austerity. This comes as the Chancellor announced significant cuts to public spending in the autumn budget. The UK government claimed these spending cuts and tax rises were necessary to deal with inflation and the predicted economic recession. Speaking after the announcement in Westminster, Ms Callaghan said, spending cuts would deepen and prolong the recession, which she claimed would force many families and residents to face difficult decisions over the coming months. The Eastern Bartonshire MP's comments add to growing concern about the impact of the Chancellor's austerity agenda. Ben Zaranko, a senior research economist at the Institute for Fiscal Studies, warned that swing, swinging cuts risk worsening the recession, while charity bosses said that there was a risk of rapid growth in the need for food banks and other crisis support. Commenting, Amy said, The Chancellor talks about the difficult decisions in the autumn budget, but he doesn't know the half of it. There are people in Eastern Bartonshire who face the choice between avoiding debt or feeding their kids, about whether they can afford to put the heating on or if it's time to turn to charity for support. The reality is the Chancellor has taken the easy decision to impose austerity not out of incompetence but as a way to push through an ideological attack on public services. Kirky Cobb's prestigious award win a Kirkintilla police officer is to be recognised for his hard work and positive attitude at a national award ceremony this week. Temporary Sergeant Stuart Cairn received nine nominations before he was shortlisted in the Unsung Hero category at the annual Scottish Police Federation Awards. The response supervisor, who is based in the Greater Glasgow Division at Kirkintilla, was praised for his compassion and understanding and for regularly going above and beyond to take care of his colleagues. 
Sergeant Kieran supported his team throughout the COVID-19 pandemic and still frequently checks their welfare by conducting formal and informal de debriefs to make sure everyone is fit and well on duty. Nominees spoke about the high regard Sergeant Kieran gives to his team's well-being and his efforts to provide development opportunities that help lift morale. Stuart said, I've always treated everyone the way I would like to be treated. I've done the job for a while now in response to policing, so I know the demands and the stresses that it has on people. If you're looking after a team, I think it's important to lead by example, and I would hope that positivity then goes into the team. It was a very worrying time at the height of COVID. Everybody had concerns, probably none more so than frontline policing, because it was of the things we were dealing with and the contact with members of the public. So, communication was vital, and trying to understand their fears, because I had the same fears, but it's a job that had to be done, we couldn't shy away from it. Schools receive music award. Two Eastern Barnshire schools are among the first in Scotland to receive a brand new music award and be named We Make Music Schools. Pupils at Craig Dew Primary in Mogai and Lairdsland Primary in Kirkintilloch took part in a pilot digital music making project over the last academic year and along with only 13 other Scottish schools have achieved the We Make Music Digital Award. Rory, a P7 pupil from Craig Dew Primary said, We are so grateful that Sonapa came in and gave us a lesson on the basics of a garage band. It was an incredible experience making our own songs. My music skills have really improved and I am now delighted we got the award. The nationally recognised accolade is a collaboration between the well-established We Make Music organisation and Sonapa, which is a new teaching resource that empowers non-musician teachers to deliver music lessons in class. Eastern Bartonshire Council's Instrumental Music Service supported both schools throughout the year. Commenting on the award, Councillor Linda Williamson, convener of the Council's Education Committee, congratulated both schools on their awards and said, well done to these trailblazing schools, bringing a new dimension to music lessons and teaching children about modern music production. It sounds like they had great fun learning about the technology and creating their own pieces. Well done to all involved. District News, Churches, 23rd of November 2022. St Mary's Parish Church. The service on Sunday, November the 27th, will begin at 11am as usual and will be taken by the Reverend Dr Ruth Morrison. Communion will be celebrated on this Sunday and will mark the beginning of Advent. The Young Church will meet in the halls during the service for age-related activities. Tickets for the Advent Lunch, which will take place on Sunday, December the 11th, will be on sale in the halls after the service. Cost is £5. On Saturday, December the 3rd, the Kirkintel of Mayworth Voice Choir will be performing Christmas music at St Mary's Parish Church beginning at 2.30pm. Tickets costing £6 are on sale from choir members 0141 775 2437. On Saturday, December the 10th, a Saturday debate will be taking place in the church halls. This will involve willing bakers to bake shortbread stars for distribution to the local community. Further information is available from the church office 0141 775 1166. Springfield Cambridge Church. Morning worship on Sunday, November the 27th will be led by Reverend Ian Taylor, Reverend Edson Duque de Castro and Mrs Julie Harte in the sanctuary at 11am. The Sunday school meets in room 2. There is also a creche facility where we will be happy to look after your child, birth to 3 years, in room 2. Morning worship has also been live streamed in the Springfield Cambridge Church YouTube channel. A link to this can be found on the website www.springfieldcambridge.org.uk and Facebook page where updated information about events and organisations can also be found. Tea and coffee are available in the, after the service in the Cameron Hall. Come along and enjoy the fellowship. There will be a vestry hour on Wednesday November the 23rd from 10am to 11am for anyone who wishes to speak with the minister. There will be a short weekly service of worship in the Springfield Chapel on Wednesday, November the 23rd, from 11.10am to 11.30am, with refreshments afterwards in the Hall of Fellowship. The City of Glasgow Wind Orchestra are having their Christmas concert in the church on Friday, December the 9th, at 7.30pm. 
Join us for another fabulous evening of cheery music, witty banter and light refreshments. Payment at the door. Eastern Bartonshire Strings Orchestra are holding their Christmas concerts in the church on Sunday, December the 11th at 6pm. Local school pupils and staff return to get us into the Christmas mood. The concert is followed by tea, tea and coffee and mince pies. St David's Memorial Park Our Sunday morning service on November the 27th will be at our usual time of 10.30am and will be led by our Church of Scotland reader, John Nicholson. During our morning worship, school-aged children will have the opportunity to go through to our halls for their own time of fun and learning with JAM. All are welcome to attend our service. There are some COVID measures still in place. However, the wearing of face masks is not mandatory at this time. We look forward to welcoming you to the church. Our Tuesday lunchtime service will be held each Tuesday from noon in our small hall. Our next service will be Tuesday, November the 29th. All are welcome to attend this afternoon service. Our guild will be meeting on the same day from 7.30pm to 9.30pm. The speaker at this event is, event is Reverend Philip Wright. We would like to extend a warm invitation. The Christmas craft event on Saturday, November the 26th for primary age, for, from 10am to noon is for all primary age children. This event will be the start of monthly Saturday morning activities for primary age children. The next date for which is to be confirmed. Register your child with, the, with our youth organisation prior to arriving. Details are on Facebook. Also, the church has commenced with a warm space on Monday, November the 21st. This will continue on Mondays. Volunteers are needed to support this event. If you can offer some time and support, please contact the church through the Facebook page. In the next few weeks, details of Christmas events will be shared with you. There are Christmas stalls, Christmas connections and Concordia choir events to look forward to over the upcoming festive season. Torrance Parish Church the morning service, in person, is at 10.30am, conducted by Reverend Stuart Irwin. During the service, the youngsters meet together in Crash Junior Church and FROG. To join the service online, click www.torrensparishchurch.online.church. The cafe is open every Wednesday, 9am to noon, for teas and coffee, and delicious home baking. Why not come and taste for yourself? The prayer ministry team will also be available from 10.30am to noon on Wednesdays 6.15pm to 8.15pm P1 to S6 and the boys brigade meet on Thursdays 7pm to 9pm P7 to S6. To find out about regular weekly activities check the website for what's on at www.tcpc.org.uk Kenmuir Parish Church we are now operating a warm welcome hub each Friday from noon until 3pm. This will provide a warm space with soup, tea and a chat that is free to all. In these difficult times, some folks could possibly do with some heat, food and company. So please think of any vulnerable neighbours, etc. you may know and bring them, along to, to, bring them along on Fridays. Our first Sunday in Advent service at 11am will be led by Bruce and Alison Keith. Also on Sunday evening from 7pm, we will be holding our November previous evening. The wedding of mass will leave to personal choice throughout the sanctuary. The service will be live streamed on YouTube and can be found by searching for Kemier Bishop Briggs. Details of all of our groups that are currently running may be found on our website kemier-church.co.uk To find us on Facebook, just search for Kemier Parish Church. If you would like to join our WhatsApp group or receive the Bible studies from ABC, then email us at kimyourchurch at icloud.com. Colston Wellpark Church. A warm welcome to our service this morning, starting at 11am, and led by Reverend Leslie Grieve. Tea and coffee served in the hall after the service. The Colston Art Club continues this Monday, starting at 10am to 1pm. New members invited, and if interested, contact 07709 584 680. Our pre-Christmas art sale and coffee morning is on Saturday, December the 3rd from 11am to 2pm. Cake and company is on every Wednesday from 11am to 12 noon. Come along for a chat in good company. The brownies have restarted to meet every Wednesday from 6.30pm 
All girls aged from 7 to 10 years welcome. The Boys Brigade is on every Friday at 7pm, company and seniors. The Food Bank is, op is on this Friday at 11am to 1pm and 2pm to 4pm. A special service for remembering is on this Sunday at 2.30pm. This will be a time of reflection and remembering those who will not be with us to celebrate Christmas. Follow our church services on Facebook, Colston Wellpark Parish Church. And if you require further information on any of our church activities, contact Leslie Grieve on 07813-255-052. St James Church, Hilton Road, Bishop Briggs, Rector Rev. Canon Paul Watson, 0141-230-4080. There is a communion service on Thursday at 11am and on Sunday, November the 27th at 9am and 10.30am. Everyone is welcome to come along to any of these services, face masks are personal choice. Do stay on for tea and coffee and fellowship afterwards. The meditation labyrinth is still available in the car park for a mindful walk around. There are also virtual services and groups. For up to date and further information, refer to our social media, Facebook, St James Alice Bishop Briggs, Website www.stjamesbishopbriggs.org.uk Kirk and Tillis Church of God At Regent Hall every Wednesday, our coffee corner is open from noon to 2pm. Join our friends and neighbours for a chat and over a coffee. On Sunday there will be a Zoom service at 6.30pm. The speaker will be Rodney Johnson. Accessing details can be obtained. Access details can be obtained by emailing Hello at regionalhall.org. For up to date and further information on our services, visit our website at www.regionalhall.org. Lanes and Union Parish Church. A community breakfast is on Sunday, November the 27th in the New Hall at 10am. Sunday worship at 11am and Sunday, November the 27th will be our youth service when the Lanes and Scout Group will be joining us for the annual parade. A live stream of the service is available on YouTube via our website. Craft Cafe is on Tuesday, November the 29th in Dean House, 2pm to 4pm for adults who enjoy knitting, crochet, cross stitch and other crafts. The Meeting Place Coffee Shop is open on Wednesdays, 10am to 12 noon in the New Hall. Meet your friends and enjoy a chat. The Coffee Pot is open Fridays, 10am to 12 noon in the New Hall. Lindsay Old Parish Church. Sunday worship is at 11am. Sunday school for children aged 3 years to primary 7 and focus for young people. A creche is available for children under 3. On Sunday, November the 27th at 2pm there will be a bereavement service. This is a short reflective service for those who have lost a loved one. For more information please contact Rev. Louise McClements time out Monday, November the 28th at 7.45pm in the church hall is a quiz hosted by Anne Bell followed by Fish Supper. Bishop Briggs, Cadder Parish Church, for full details see website. We look forward to welcoming you this Sunday to our morning service at 10.30am led by Reverend John McGregor and Jose Javier Usendo Malo MMUS. Children, Cadder Kids, meeting the church prior to the service. Early Fellowship meets in South Hall Chapel at 9.30am on Thursday for half an hour with Rev. John McGregor and also available on Tuesday and Thursday on Zoom. For further details, contact the Minister. Cadder Coffee Shop at Cadder South Hall on Kirkintilk Road is open on Tuesday to Thursday from 10am to 2pm and on Friday from 10am to 12 noon. Come along and enjoy good food and great fellowship. Cadder Coffee Shop Festive Afternoon Tea Enjoy a selection of hot and cold savouries, many festive treats and cakes, tea and coffee, Tuesday the 13th, Wednesday the 14th and Thursday December the 15th at 12.30pm. Tickets £12.50 can be purchased at the coffee shop from Tuesday November the 8th. Guild meets on Thursday November the 24th, South Hall at 7pm. The Guild Coffee Morning is on Saturday. November the 26th in the South Halls 10am till 12 noon. Tickets can be purchased from the committee or at the coffee shop. Girls Brigade, full details see website. 
Explorers P1 to P3, 6.15pm to 7.30pm. Juniors P4 to P7, 6.30pm to 8pm. Brigadiers S1 to S6, 7.30pm to 9pm. Boys Brigade, full detail C website. Anchor Boys, Monday 6pm to 7pm. Junior Section, Monday 7.15pm to 8.30pm. Company slash Senior Section, Friday 7pm to 9pm. Tickets for the Christmas film, Nativity on Friday, December the 2nd, are now on sale. Tickets £5 are available for members of the Fellowship team. Home Church, Lammermoor Road, Kirkintillach, G66 4JP. One Church, Home Church, four locations, Kirkintillach, Glasgow, Stornoway and online. A church for all ages. Warm space, warm meal, warm welcome at home church every Saturday at 6.30pm. Suggested donation £1.50 per adult. Children eat free. Coming soon, coffee corner on Fridays from 9.30am. Sunday, 9.30am, communion. 10am, prayer time. 10.30am, fellowship. 11am, worship service in children's church, followed by tea and coffee. The Sunday evening service is in Renfield Centre, Bath Street, Glasgow at 7pm. Minibus leaves Home Church at 6.30pm. Wednesdays at 7.15pm is Fellowship Night, including a time of prayer and Bible study. Bible study in Glasgow at Renfield Centre on Wednesday at 7.15pm. Youth meet on Fridays at 7.30pm for the Youth Alpha and Fellowship. See Facebook and Instagram for more information. Christian Aid Coffee Morning On Saturday, November the 26th, Kirkintel and Lindsay Christian Aid Group is holding an Advent Coffee Morning in St Mary's Church. Come along from 10am to 12.30pm. There will be teas and coffees as well as some stalls, books, toys, jewellery, Christmas gifts, fair trade and tombola. Tickets are £3 with all the money raised going towards this year's Christmas Christian Aid Christmas Appeal, which this year is for Malawi. Families across Malawi are facing a fight for survival this Christmas due to climate related crop devastation caused by the climate crisis. This has impacted both their food security and their livelihoods, leaving them facing an insecure future. St Columbus Hill Head Services Do join us for our Sunday morning service at St Columbus at 10am or at Hill Head at 11.30am. Refreshments are served after the service at St Columbus and before the service at Hill Head. You can also connect with us by live stream via www.kirkintillochstinkslagombas.org.uk or by searching for St Columbus Hillhead Kirkintillach on YouTube. We have a short term midweek service at St Columbus on Wednesdays at 10am. Free hot drinks and biscuits in our weekly warm welcome events 2pm to 4pm at Hillhead on Wednesday afternoons and 10am till 12 noon at St Columbus Halls on Thursdays. Come for a chat to read the paper or to make use of our free Wi-Fi, St Columbus only. District News, Westminster View, The Price of Tory Austerity Measures by Amy Callaghan MP In the days leading up to the autumn statement, the Chancellor done his media rounds, reiterating that difficult decisions were going to have to be made. Some people in Eastern Partnership face the choice between feeding their kids or paying their increased mortgage fees about whether they can afford to put the heating on or if it's time to turn to charity for support. These are the real hard decisions. So, excuse me for not feeling much sympathy towards the Chancellor, a man who once co-authored a book that called for the NHS to be replaced with a US style insurance system and we're supposed to believe that he found it difficult to slash public spending? It's so frustrating because it doesn't have to be this way. The decision to bring back Tory austerity is a political one. It is a shroud to cover an ideological attack on public services where a right-wing Tory Chancellor and the wealthiest Prime Minister in history can stash away, slash away at the state and cut support from those who need it the most, all the while pretending that this is in our best interest. The reality is the Chancellor's difficult decisions will create a longer and deeper recession than was predicted. You don't have to take my word for it. Just look at what the Institute for Fiscal Studies said last week. A story, austerity measures risk worsening the recession. We should be doing the exact opposite. When a country faces recession, the best thing a government can do is to increase public spending. This puts more money in our pockets and bolsters confidence in the community, in the economy. 
As a result, we keep buying goods and services as normal, we shall stimulate the economy, and lifts us out of recession. People here and across the UK are facing difficult decisions because of choices made at Westminster. Their choices are leading to the biggest decline in living standards since records began, with more than a million people expected to join the 14.5 million already living in poverty. My door is open to everyone in Eastern Bartonshire. If you are facing difficult decisions because of the cost of living crisis, then get in touch. There is support out there, not least the measures that the Scottish Government has already taken, such as increasing the Scottish per child payment. Please don't face these difficult decisions alone. And that was the Westminster View by Amy Callahan MP. Ford New Mustangs a very different pony. All change for powerful Ford, writes Rob Octorloney. I can't for the life of me imagine the great Steve McQueen being over-impressed. The man who made a habit of driving racing cars very fast, and the man who put the muscly Mustang right up there among the motoring icons with his exploits and bullet, will probably be scratching his head in disbelief and give the latest Ford to carry the name one of those looks. Not that you'll find the blue oval anywhere in the latest electric Mustang. This is a 21st century Stang, be no doubt about that. To be fair, there probably would be a wry grin the first time the right hand pedal was touched, because the response can be fierce, certainly not subtle, and the same can be said for the brakes, which can anchor up and halt forward progress in such a way that the seatbelt takes a firm grip of your shoulder. These then are the early impressions of Ford's first all electric SUV, a car with a far bigger info screen inside than you'd expect. The all wheel drive Mach E doesn't disappoint from a performance point of viewpoint for its Tesla-like acceleration, and it proves to be both sure-footed and grippy, as well as giving you a decent range, as long as you don't have lead soles and you cut down the spirit prods in the accelerator. Using the name of one of their most iconic sports cars to attract customers could be a good ploy, as long as it meets the day-to-day needs of the driver and also offers value, style and curb appeal. Mustang ticks most of the boxes in a range that starts around the £50,000 mark, Though the Mac E Premium AWV version sampled here weighs in at £65,405. The range features rear and all wheel drive versions, standard or extended range, and battery capacities of 70 kilowatt hours and 91 kilowatt hours. As an example, the Mustang Mac E RWD extended range version will take you up to 379 miles without needing to top up the battery. If you're considering going electric but aren't used to being solely reliant on a battery pack under the floor, that could be a deal clincher. The standard range AWD, all wheel drive, has a motor driving each axle. You get more traction and swift acceleration, 0 to 62 miles per hour takes 6.3 seconds, but the official range drops to 248 miles. Standard equipment gives you a huge portrait style 15.5 inch touchscreen which takes pride of place in the middle of the dash and controls most of the car's functions, as well as heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, a smartphone charging pad, adaptive cruise control, and front and rear parking sensors and camera. The AWD Extended Range version adds a 10-speaker B&O audio system, a panoramic glass roof, a powerful tailgate, and active park assist. Essential driving information, speed, battery percentage, and the remaining range is on a separate 10.2-inch digital instrument cluster behind the steering wheel, and because it's there just below your line of sight, it's easy to read. As already mentioned, the calibration of the accelerator could do with a bit of work, too. It lunges off the line unless you're judicious with its pedal, and coupled with the rather grabby brakes can make the Mackie hard to drive smoothly around town. So, after more than half a century, the Ford Mustang formula of muscular styling, a raucous V8 and a rear wheel drive is gone. Ford's first foray down the electric avenue is a very different pony. The car in fact. Ford Mustang Mach-E Performance AWD. Price £65,405. Power 265 brake horsepower. Torque £427 per foot. Transmission Single speed automatic. Top speed 111 mph. 0 to 62 miles per hour, 6.3 seconds. Economy, 248 mile range. CO2 emissions, 0 grams per kilometre.
Made an Impact. An article by Brian Yule and read by me, Corey. Springburn Harriers was named Impact Club of the Year at the recent 4G Scottish Athletics and Jog Scotland Annual Awards in Glasgow. The club, which is based in Hunters Hill Sports Hub in Bishop Briggs, has in excess of 300 athletes from under 9s to over 70s, and is the only athletic club in the UK with the Duke of Edinburgh licence. This award is given out in recognition of the great work going on in the athletics clubs across Scotland. It recognises, among other criteria, growth, retention, recruitment and development of the club's business. In its nomination, Jogs Scotland stated Springburn's fundraising effort this year enabled the club to purchase high jump equipment, broadening the range of athletic disciplines available to young members. The club's Young Leader programme has supported a number of young people to embark on the coaching pathways and over 50 teams are working towards their Duke of Edinburgh award through supporting the club. The club's new event team also staged a number of local races. Springburn saw off competition from Aberdeen AAC and Pitrivi AAC to lift the trophy. Frank Thorne said, It is an amazing achievement for the club to be recognised at the Scottish Athletics National Awards. Members take part and are coached in all aspects of running, jumping and throwing. The membership consists of everybody from those interested in fitness to those participating in national events, and we participate in Scottish indoor and outdoor leagues in both winter and summer. The club is a licensed organisation under the Duke of Edinburgh scheme, allowing young people to enhance and develop skill, teamwork and confidence through extracurricular activities, which includes coaching and camping. In an effort to widen athletics and fitness among school children, the club runs various races including a cross-country event, the first of which took place at Woodhead Park in Kirkintock earlier this month and in the summer, road races on the 4th and Clyde Canal. For more information about the club, visit www.springburnharriers.co.uk. That email address again is www.springburnharriers.co.uk. That article was written by Brian Newell and read by me, Corey. Scott is able to start his rehab following surgery. An article by Brian Newell. Kirkenthalk Rob Roy player Fraser Scott has provided an update on his condition after suffering a serious knee injury at the end of last season. The midfielder suffered a rupture slash tear to his ACL and damaged the anterolateral ligament, which required surgery. This type of injury could see him miss the entire season, and after waiting nearly three months, recently went under the knife so he can now start his rehabilitation. In a Twitter message last week, Scott said, That is me now six weeks post-op since having my ACL reconstructed. So I'm starting to see a lot of progress and I've started back at rehab. As Scott is self-employed and unable to work until his knee is better, the club started a crowdfunding campaign for him. It has thus raised £1,760 of a £5,000 target. To make a donation, visit www.just-giving.com forward slash crowdfunding forward slash Kirkintalk hyphen Rob Roy. Rob Roy were due to host Hurlfer at Guy's Meadow on Saturday in the WOS Premier Division. Unfortunately, due to the recent heavy downpours, the match was postponed after the pitch failed a morning inspection. If the pitch has dried out, Rob Roy are due to be home to Troon on Saturday. In the same division, Peters Hill 
were in action as they made the short trip across the city to Pollock. The home side registered a 2-0 victory as Doherty scored after 41 minutes and Mullen sealed the three points on 57 minutes. Next up it will be Peters Hill's turn to host Hurlford on Saturday. The funeral of Peters Hill match secretary Derek Cosier will take place on Friday following his sudden passing earlier this month. It will take place in St. Aloysius RC Church in Hillkirk Street, Springburn at 10am. Thereafter, the cortege will travel to Lamhill Cemetery. All friends are invited to attend. A club spokesperson said, we're all deeply shocked at the sudden passing of our match secretary, Derek Crozier. Our sincerest condolences go out to Margaret and the rest of the family at this very difficult time. We're also deeply saddened to hear of the passing of longtime supporter Walter Ewing. Our thoughts and prayers also go to Walter's family and friends. That article was written by Brian Yule. It's honours even as top two clash in the women's game. It finished honours even as the top two sides in the SWPL1 met at Peters Hill Park on Sunday. Glasgow City and Rangers both went into the game with a 100% record after nine games, with the visitors not having conceded a goal so far this campaign. That would change after 52 minutes, as Emily Whelan was tripped in the box and Lauren Davidson stepped up to score from the spot. However, Rangers would get a penalty of their own on 70 minutes, which Tessel Middag, and the paragraph and sentence just ends there. In the dying moments, Lisa Martinez hit the floor for Rangers, but both sides had to settle for a point. City face another Glasgow rival on Sunday as they travel to Partick Thistle. Rossville are through the fourth round of the South Challenge Cup after a 4-1 victory over Johnson Borough on Friday night. Guy opened the scoring for the home side after just four minutes and it remains 1-0 at the break. The away side equalised through Wallace five minutes after the restart, but McAtter put Rossville back in front on 58 minutes. The visitors were reduced to 10 men after 70 minutes and further goals from Malcolm on 75 minutes and Kelly, 6 minutes from time, sealed the win. Rossville were drawn home to East Kilbride in the next round, but next travelled to Coburnie Leadside in the First Division on Saturday. However, Ashfield exited the cup after a 2-1 defeat at Mary Hill, with Black on the score sheet. Glasgow Perthshire were away to Ardeer Thistle in the second division, and won 2-1 with goals from Musa and Kirkwood. Both will be in second division action on Saturday, as Ashfield are away to Glasgow United, while Perthshire host fourth Wanderers. Rossville Academy trip to BSC Glasgow fell victim to the weather, and they will be back in action on Saturday when they host Harmony Row. In the same division, West Park United won 2-0 at home to Easterhouse on Saturday. They travelled to Glen Vale. Due to a waterlogged pitch, Rossville women's trip to Hutchison Vale became a home match as they won 5-3. Rossville goals were scored by Whiteford, Anderson, brackets 2, Mick Jacobs and a trialist. Rossville travelled to Inverness Caledonian Thistle on Sunday. Thank you for listening to this week's Kirk and Bill Herald podcast. Brought to you by Q and Review, Print Speaking to the Blind. If you have any feedback, you're welcome to call us on 0141 772 3976. If you enjoyed this recording, feel free to subscribe to our channel.